Hi, my name is Ed. I'm a full stack developer at Streaming Fast. And in this video, you will learn how to quickly build a substreams that writes events from a contract to an SQL database. Just so you know, this entire page will be linked in the description if you want to follow that in the future. All right, so the first requirement that is important for this is you need to have the substream CLI installed. So it's very important that you have version 1.1.15 and above installed. If it's below, it will not work. So to check your version, it's pretty simple. Just run substreams dash dash version. That'll give you the version that's installed on your computer. In my, in my case, I have the dev version because I'm building from source. But if you have a released installed, you should be able to see the correct version there. Secondly, you need to have Docker installed. So this is very important because in the second part of these videos, we will be running for Docker containers locally, so you need to have Docker installed. Thirdly, I put Rust as optional, but if you really want to get your hands dirty, have some fun building substreams and building fast substreams, you need to have Rust installed. Great. Now, we're going to keep going basically over this tutorial, but from in the terminal. So fire up a terminal, type in substreams in it, and then put in the, your project name. We will be building a, a substream for the board eight contract. So simply, you're going to be pretty original with my naming here. Then you got to choose your protocol. So we're going to go, we are in Ethereum on mainnet. Leave empty to use the board eight contract. So I'm just going to leave that empty again. And now, now what it's doing is that we will be making API calls to go and fetch the API and the initial block of your contract. Great, so done pretty fast. So we're gonna CD in this one and we're gonna be opening the code with our favorite editor. So a lot of files have been created. So if you've never done a substreams, this you're gonna see that a lot of stuff has been done for you. But what is very important to know, and we're just gonna go over two little files because uh, the rest of the files are pretty much out of the scope for this video, but those two files are the substreams YAML file and the librs. So the substreams YAML file really is the bread and butter of your entire substreams. It basically defines your substreams. It tells it that it has two modules. So we have generated a map events module and a db out module, and we have a sync also here defined. So the map event modules takes the events from the ABI, crunches the data, spits that out inside of the db out. The DBR will take those, crunches, has a lot of fun with the data, and pushes, produces database changes. Then these database changes are then going to be fed inside of our sync, and then the sync will simply create uh, real rows in a database, in a Postgres database that we will be seeing in a bit. Now, we also have the libRS that I had mentioned. So here, for example, what's pretty important is that you can see that we have the, the first module that I showed, the map events, and the DB out. So we're not going to go over the code because this is out of the scope, but feel free to see if you want to read a little bit of Rust and a little, try to understand what's happening there. So first thing that we're going to need to do is get ourselves a token. So this is actually pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we have it here. So simply paste it. I basically have a, fun a bash function that just runs this whenever I type in SF token. Then we're going to be building it. So simply type in make build. And now it's building your Rust code. So just so you know, uh, if this is the first time you're running Rust, it may take a little bit more time because it needs to actually fetch the dependencies. In my case, they're already fetched because I have run Rust a little bit in the past as it's being compiling. There we go. Now, if you want to run your substream, it's pretty easy. Substreams run, you pass in the YAML file, you pass in the module. So we saw those two modules. We had map events and DB app. Dash D for the stop lock. So you're telling it when you, when you want it to stop and plus one to just go one block over the initial block of your contract. I know for a fact plus one is juicy enough for us because I know that there's data there. So as you can see, we have data here. We're not going to go over the data here because that's besides the scope. So, so we followed this pretty well. We built it, we ran it, we have our output. You can also play with the GUI if you want to have a lot of fun with it. Um, yeah. So 
Now let's deploy a local sync dev environment. So this is when this is now we're really going to have a lot of fun. So fire up three terminals. So this we're going to navigate to exactly the location that we have uh, created our substreams. So here and this this terminal, I'm just going to run a watch command uh, that listens just to Docker PS, so basically just runs Docker PS every two seconds. So first thing you want to do is you want to run substreams alpha sync serve. The sync serve command will run a small little go server locally that listens on port 8000. It listens for incoming requests, incoming sync deploy requests, which we are going to be doing right now. Substreams alpha sync dash deploy dot slash substream. So you just pass in your YAML. You remember the small little section of configuration for the sync? This is basically how it's taking that configuration. So as I said in the beginning, we will be deploying four containers on your computer. The first one is the Postgres. So the other three containers are dependent on this one. So it waits until it becomes healthy. There it is. It's now healthy. So now what's happening? We have deployed three other containers. So I'm going to leave this, leave this running a little bit as I explain what's happening. So one of the first containers that we have deployed is a PG web interface. This is just a small little interface which you'll be able to see the tables that have been created and we can run SQL queries. Then you have also have a small little Postgre file, which is just a small little GraphQL interface that you can also run GraphQL calls. Then you have the Postgres database, as I said, and you have our sync. So what's pretty interesting about the sync is you can actually just basically see what's happening with our sync. So this will give us information on the sync. So here, for example, you can see a bit more information. This is the name of the, your substreams that have been defined, which we had said it's uh, we had given the name of it. The status is running. It's our this is the block that it's at right now. So if I rerun again the sync info command, going to be a bit further out. So it's, it's already processed 100,000 blocks between these two calls. So you can see how fast it is. Um, yeah, you can also, have, if you want to have a little bit more details, you can go over the Docker logs, uh, which gives out a little bit more information. My face is in the way, so we don't really see much, but you can read out these logs if you're interested. We're not going to go over the, these logs in this moment. So again, we're going to see the info. As we saw, it is still running. So let's pause it. So if you're wondering, let's say you forgot the command, you can just type in dash dash help. It's your best friend. Get the pause command, pause a running substream sync. Just so you know, currently we can you can only deploy one substream sync locally. So you don't really need to pass in an ID or anything. So substreams alpha sync pause. This will be pausing here. So you will be killing one of these containers here. There we go. So now that container is not there anymore because it is paused. But here is where we're going to go and have some fun. So let's launch this first page and then this second page. So this here is the PG web interface. So these are the tables that have been created for which the database changes are sent. So here, for example, you see the first table, which is the approvals for all approvals. This is uh, an internal uh, that we set. So it just basically is a small curse that tells you the latest where it is, your substreams. Then you have another table here and another table here. So these basically are the events. We just take the events, create tables, and we feed it data. Then you, know, you can also go on uh, port 3000 and simply run some GraphQL queries. You're going to be seeing the same data that you see here as in the database, but in a different format. So you can just imagine the potential that you can do with all of this here, right? So now you want to stop the the substream. So again, you pretty much simply fetch stop a running substream sync. So in this case, oh, well, let's resume it again, just just so you see what's happening when you resume it. So when you're doing a resume, because these containers already exist, it's not going to rerun these containers. It's just going to rerun the substream sync SQL container. Right? If you want to stop it, just simply type in substreams alpha sync dash stop. And again, because we only have a one deployment at the same time, it just stops one the, the, the given deployment that has been done. It is shutting down the services. So let's just wait and voila, it is all shut down. 
So I think we went over everything. Yes. So uh, feel free to ask us questions on anything uh, in our Discord channel. Uh, that will be linked in the description. Uh, don't be shy. You know, uh, we're, a, we're a good community of people. We're always up to answering questions. And feel free to ask as many questions. There are no stupid questions. Um, yeah. And if you like this video, leave a thumbs up. And we're going to keep producing videos like these in the future. Thank you. Thank you.